Chairman, and thank you, Judge Gorsuch. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you to your family as well and your many friends and associates who have come to support you. It says a lot for you uh, to have so many uh, willing to be here. And I've been astounded at uh, the number of uh, op-eds I've, I've read and statements I've heard from those, uh, not just those that you agree with, but those who don't always agree with you. That says a lot about you. I uh, had a speech to deliver a while ago, and uh, when it was fed into the teleprompter, uh, your name wasn't as familiar as some, and it uh, replaced it with Judge Grouch throughout the entire <laughs> time, and I had to, had to be careful. But uh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> I think it's safe to say by the end of this week, every spell checker in the country will know your name. And uh, uh, Judge Grouch is about as far as you can get uh, from Judge Gorsuch in terms of your temperament. So I, I commend you. That may change by the end of the week as well, though, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't think so. As we all know, one of the most consequential decisions a president makes is who will he or she will select uh, to fill vacancies on the Supreme Court. This is a lifetime appointment. It means that a man or woman who is selected uh, will likely be interpreting our laws for decades to come. Uh, Judge Anson and Scalia demonstrated how much one, just, uh, one justice can impact uh, and uh, shift the gravity of the court and no justice in recent mem memory has so fundamentally influenced the trajectory of the Supreme Court or our approach to reading the law. He did this with an unshakable commitment to an originalist interpretation of the Constitution and a textualist uh, approach to statutes. Judge uh, Scalia's passing marked a watershed moment uh, for our, the future of our judiciary. Uh, one law professor remarked, quote, who lets the legal system survive is that people, uh, what lets uh, the legal system survive is that people in power, such as Scalia, believe that the system controls their individual judgments. What will happen to the law without Justice Scalia to believe in it? Now, fortunately, the president has nominated a jurist who believes in the rule of law. Now, in meeting with Judge Gorsuch and learning about his judicial philosophy, I was impressed by his respect for the law and his commitment to service. I've been particularly struck by his recognition that, quote, it is for Congress, not the courts, to write new law, and that a justice should make decisions based on what the law demands, not an outcome he or she desires. As we discussed in my office, uh, you said that when you don that black robe that uh, Ben Sass talked about, uh, you understand that you are not a legislator. That is important. It was brought up before that uh, my one of my colleagues that says that uh, Judge Gorsuch is pro-business or against the little guy. I think the record suggests that he faithfully applaud, applies the law and the laws as enacted by Congress. Uh, good judges don't decide cases based on how big the guy is, but based on the law and the facts. Now, I'm not alone in thinking that. Uh, Harvard Law professor Noah Feldman, a self-described liberal, recently wrote that, quote, siding with workers against employers isn't a jurisprudential decision, it's a political stance. And justices, including progressive justices, shouldn't decide cases based on who the parties are. I think Judge Gorsuch's opinions show just that. He decides cases based on what the law says, not who the parties are. Judge Gorsuch has repeatedly reminded us uh, that uh, while we as legislators may appeal to our own moral convictions in shaping the law, judges in a democratic society should not decide cases based on their own moral convictions or their policy preferences. With Judge Gorsuch, I think the record shows that we can be confident that he will read the law as written and not legislate from the bench. With regard to the separation of powers, Judge Gorsuch has cautioned against, quote, governmental encroachment on the people's liberties, which could occur should the political majorities of the legislative and executive branches be permitted to decide cases and the political unresponsive judiciary branch be allowed to create or execute policies. For my part, I'm excited to confirm a justice who reveres the separation of powers as a central principle of our Constitution. Now, Judge Gorsuch has also demonstrated support for religious liberties. Our, countries ha ha our country has always valued the right of individuals to practice their faith according to the dictates of their own conscience. 
He once wrote that our religious freedom statute, quote, don't just apply to protect popular religious beliefs. It also perhaps it's most, it, it does perhaps its most important work in protecting unpopular religious beliefs, vindicating this nation's long-held aspiration to serve as a refuge for religious tolerance. The Supreme Court later agreed with Judge Gorsuch that it is the government's job to protect an individual's ability to practice their religion, not to instruct them how to practice their religion. Now, finally, as an Arizonan, I'm proud of the fact that uh, Judge Gorsuch is a fellow Westerner. When you, where you're from influences your understanding of cultural and re, uh, regional sensitivities, and the current markup of the Supreme Court has an unmistakable lack of geographic diversity. <laughs> Of the eight current justices, five of them were born in New York or New Jersey. As we say in Arizona and elsewhere, New York City. <laughs> More. Uh, it, this is nice to have uh, someone from the West with a Western perspective. And fortunately, uh, Judge Gorsuch fits that bill. When I met uh, Judge Gorsuch earlier this week, we talked about our respective Western backgrounds. I told him about my days growing up on a cattle ranch in rural Arizona. Uh, he told me that his heart has always been in the American West. You learn a lot about a person by how they spend their time with their friends and family. There's no mistaking it with Judge Gorsuch. He is a Westerner through and through. Now, what makes Judge Gorsuch a true Westerner is uh, more than just where he lives or what his personal interests are. In the West, we pride ourselves on being a free people with strong communities and limited government. Judge Gorsuch's jurisprudence reflect that every Westerner, what every Westerner knows to be true, an intrusive West, or federal government can't interfere with the ability of Western states to govern themselves. And perhaps more than anything, it will be Judge Gorsuch's Western perspective that most enriches, enriches debate on the Supreme Court for years to come. Now, uh, there's been a lot said about uh, what happened last year uh, with the nomination of Merrick Garland. I find it striking and very revealing that one of the first calls that Judge Gorsuch made uh, when he received this nomination was to Merrick Garland, his friend. Uh, I think that says a lot about the man, regardless of any of our thoughts. And certainly what happened here shouldn't reflect on Judge Gorsuch. But I, I appreciate uh, the temperament that you have um, and your willingness to sub subject yourself and your family and friends to this process, and I look forward to the rest of the hearing. I yield back. Thank you, uh, Senator Flake. Now, uh, Senator Blumenthal. 